正式向我们所有的市民和游客开放。那么今天上午的直播呢，我们也是在获得了中国丝绸博物馆的授权之后，独家进行探访直播。呃，说到西子湖畔的中国丝绸博物馆，相信大家并不会陌生。You may be very familiar with the history here because today we have exhibited hundreds of cultural relics and national treasures. For most of the relics, they are actually coming from Dunhuang Museum as well as the Gansu Museum. All of these are considered as the national. Treasures. All these treasures has been traveled over 3,000 kilometers to Zhejiang Province, Hangzhou City. Why we choose these relics to be exhibited here? And today we will uncover all of these answers. And also today we have a special guest, who is the curator from the China National Silk Museum. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I am. Ji Xiaofeng from the China National Silk Museum. So today, when I came here, I realized that there is a special design for the entrance. Because in these two places, we have a special toll gate. So first, I would like to talk about the Western region. So these are two borders. So if you enter the two borders, actually you are basically in the Dunhuang. We all know that Dunhuang is a special stop or transfer point on the Silk Road. So actually, you are the planner for these exhibitions. What is the thought behind it? Actually, for Dunhuang, it is special transit for the Silk Road. When you pass the area of Dunhuang, you will actually be linked to three parts of the Silk Road. So one was the saying that for the most important part of the Belt and Road and also the Silk Road is actually located in Dunhuang. So today we have this exhibition. We want to showcase all of these unearthed treasures and present it to the public. And also, we also want to share all of these civilization to the public. So today, when we are coming to the preface room, you could see this is a very special design. I realized the lighting, and also I could feel the texture of the desert. So why we design this kind of preface hall? Because we really want to create this special experience for the audience and the visitors. For Dunhuang, some people also refer it to the Gobi Desert, and also when we are visiting Dunhuang, for some people they would like to be taken by the camels. So I already saw one model. What is that? For this one, it is actually a restoration of a model of the relic site Xuanquanzhi. So I just talk about the two borders, and also alongside with the two border borders, we have the Dunhuang County. And at that time, with this place, we already embarked and also created this prosperous road, the Silk Road. So now you could see the structure of this area. We have different sections. We have the gate, and also we have an office area. And also, we could see some、uh, horses, uh, stops. Maybe it represents the transportation in the western region. Actually, in the western region, we have more than 30 states. For some of the states,、uh, when the representative coming to Dunhuang, they could take a rest. In these transit points, so when those diplomats come into Dunhuang, they can take a rest here, and also they could share the information to the local people. So when we are looking at the sandbox, we have a basic understanding of the history of Xuanquanzhi. So now we are coming to the exhibition. We have several sections for this exhibition. So now we are coming to the first section. We are talking about the history and the governance of the ancient Dunhuang. 
So first, we have uh, some of the interpretation of the section. So back in the Han Dynasty, we could see we are using a lot of bamboo slips to make some historical records. So for example, this one is very important. For example, when people visiting the relic site, Xuan Quan Zhi, and maybe there may be some requirements uh, for the transportation. For example, if you are requesting a vehicle or uh, requesting a horse, you may send out the bamboo slips to the local authority. And all of these are ancient documentations back in the Dunhuang city in that time. So for example, this one, the bamboo slip also capture some of the stories happened. For example, when we are trying to make warrants for arrest, and they will try to record a lot of information on this slip. And also I would like to introduce with you about this Changluohou bamboo slip. This is also a story associated with a journey to the western region. For these markets, they used to visit the western region. And at that time, one of the princess for Dunhuang married to another king of the state. And for the Emperor Wu of Han Dynasty, he sent out a special envoy to the western regions to learn the situation of the princess. So in this bamboo slip, it captures all the stories and the history, and also captures some of the challenges met by the princess who have been met to who have been married to another kingdom. Well, this one I'm quite interested. It looks like a weapon. So this one looks like a um, straw, and we refer to this one as the torch of the Han Dynasty. So when we are having all of this torch, we can light up all of these straw, and we are able to see the smoke, and we are able to make a judgment to see how far away of the enemies. Now we are looking at another weapon. This is a copper crossbow. It is also a very important military weapon. We also make an animation to show how it works. And also we are seeing some of the arrowhead of that crossbow. All of these are unearthed relics. So now you could see the wisdom of our ancestors. Now I'm looking at a portrait brick. So in this portrait brick, you could see one of the soldiers. So he is riding the horses, and also he is using this crossbow machine to shoot the enemies. You could get the general picture of the war happening back in that time. So this is the history, and also it captured the captain Li Guang for his battlefield image. Now I'm looking at a very delicate figuring. So this is a uh, figuring that has been carried by a cow. I think this is quite luscious, right? Yes, because back in that time, people used horses to fight the war. So for the general public transportation, we are using cow to lead the carriage. And this part is very important in the farming industry. Now I'm looking at another portrait brick. I can see two animals are here. So for this portrait brick, it also captures some of the portraits 
especially the livelihood of the local people. So for Dunhuang, it's quite suitable for farming. So for the Emperor Wu of Han Dynasty, he has made a lot of instructions to cultivate the land. For some people, they migrated to Dunhuang, and also they start to develop and cultivate the land and the farming industry. So back in that time, the crop production accounts for one third of the national output. Now I'm looking at the farming too. What is that? This is a tool to capture the lambs. Because for the soldiers, when they're staying in the border, from time to time, they would like to improve their lives. They will set up some of the traps and trying to capture ships. And so for these two, it is the first time to be exhibited in Zhejiang province. Now we are seeing another replica. So this is the amber, and it is not produced locally. It has been introduced to Dunhuang from the western region, and this is a very beautiful decoration back in the old days. So from all these artifacts and figurines, we could see we have very prosperous economy and trade exchanges. So what is the currency we are using in the era of Dunhuang? I know that we may have some like golden coins, like silvers. So what is the currency back then? Back in the ancient times, we have our own currency. And for different countries, they have different currencies. But back in the old times, all these currency cannot be circulated. And then for our ancestors, they would like to exchange materials with silk. So silk carry a very significant meaning because it could also be used as a currency. Maybe you could give us a metaphor, for example, how many silk we could use to, for an exchange of other materials. So this is a table showing the exchange rate. So for example, uh, we use one piece of silk, we could change account. So I think um, today we are coming to the China National Silk Museum. And maybe we are receiving a lot of silk from like, different museums. So how we preserve all of these silk relics? I would say our museum, the China National Silk Museum, is leading the industry for re restore a lot of the silk materials. Just look at this one. So this one is a streamer made from the figure silk fabrics. So this one is coming from the uh, Gansu Museum. As we are seeing a lot of silk fabrics in Gansu province, and also we send our staff to stations in the Gansu Provincial Museum and try to fix all of those silk fabrics. So this one is actually coming back home, and we are trying to restore these silk fabrics, and then we exhibit this piece of art in the National Museum. And this time, I understand that many museums have provided a lot of national treasures to the China National Silk Museum. Yes, indeed, we have many dry color glazed potteries. For example, this is a figurine of camel, because back in the old days, for the Hu people, they would like to travel on the Silk Road with camel. 
So for this one, it's a tricolor glaze figurine of who people with a camel. Now you could see the expression is quite vivid. And also he is very strong. This also showcased the prosperity of Tang Dynasty. So for this glaze uh, figurine, when I look at the costume of these Hu people, it has, of, it has a special characteristics because it represents the characteristics of the Tang Dynasty. So for this camel, it is very strong. And also it shows the importance of camels. That's the way we carve this pottery figurine. So behind this pottery figurine, I also see a very beautiful sketch. So from this sketch, I could see a lot of people here, and also there are many camels. But also, I see some maybe soldiers or bandits. I'm not sure. Well, this is the merchandising team. And also, in this area, it, it seems like there is a war or the fighting between the soldiers and the bandits. So back in that time, we have a lot of uh, fighting or conflicts between the bandits and also the merchants. So when they travel on the Silk Road, from time to time we may have these conflicts. And this is the way how we capture the story with a sketch. So maybe we start right from the beginning. So first now you could see for the merchants, they are carrying their commodities, they are approaching to the border. And then they encounter bandits. And also the bandits model themselves as the soldiers. So at the beginning for the uh, merchants, they try to fight the bandits, but they fell and they surrendered to the bandits. And in the end, you could see these people have to leave empty handed because all of their commodities have been, ca have been captured by the bandits. So this also shows the importance of Dunhuang County. This is a transit point, and by having soldiers stationed in this county, it could safeguard the peace and stability of this region and to make sure that uh, we have a very prosperous Silk Road. So by having this sketch, we able to understand the history of the Silk Road. And also in this area, I see a 3D presentation of the sketch. This is also a portrait, and also we are trying to showcase a animation. This is a part of the history that we have extracted from the uh, murals. So from this 3D presentation, you're able to see the daily livelihood of the Dunhuang people. Now we are coming to another section of this exhibition. So this is the social life of ancient Dunhuang. So now we're able to see some utensils. Uh, for example, first of all, we are seeing the shoes, and also we have children's shoes back in Han Dynasty. All of these are very important because we are getting to know that for the people living in that time, they're able to wear shoes. And also we're able to see some plantations. So what is that one? It feels like a, a chessboard. Well, that is for afternoon tea. 
So for all of these are fruit bowl, they will carry the bowls, and also it shows that the Chinese people's aspiration for better life remain unchanged. So for this tray, it has been unearthed 2,000 years ago. So I think it is quite lucky for the um, local people in Hangzhou, they can actually come to this place to see the ancient fruit tree. And also they are, under to, they are able to understand the aspiration for people for better life. But if we look at the size of the tray, because maybe there may not be so many snacks, because it is only of a size of a palm. And so for this food tray, it is the first time to be exhibited in Hangzhou city. And in some of these paintings, now you could also see some of the capture of the daily life. For example, the hunting, the cooking, etc. So just now we are seeing some of the candy boxes and the food tray. And we are quite curious about their entertainment life. So in ancient Dunhuang, we have many scholars coming to Dunhuang County. For example, in this area, we are able to see some of the stationaries. We have some brushes, and also we are able to see some papers, documentations, etc. So people may like to do the calligraphy, painting. All of these are entertainments. And also they would like to play chess game. Actually, for this chess board game, is has been introduced from the Western region. This also enriched the daily life of Dunhuang people. So now we are moving to another section. So this is a stone pagoda from the Northern Liang period. This is also one of the national treasure that has been presented by Gansu Provincial Museum. So if we have to name one of the most important treasure in Hangzhou, maybe I would say this one is one of the most important one. This is the stone pagoda of the Northern Liang period in the 16th states period. So for the pagoda, you could see uh, on the top of it, it represents the India style. And inside of the pagoda and on the outer appearance, you could see some of the pattern and also the shape of the Buddha. And also on the bottom part, you could see some of the scriptures. And for the scriptures, they also capture some of the meaning representing the Confucius philosophy. And also we have special patterns printed on the uh, pagoda which represents the essence of Taoism. So for this stone pagoda, it is quite exquisite, and also it carries a lot of meanings and civilizations. If we look at the test, you could see it is very clear and bold, and it also have a big impact for the characters in the modern times. So just in the past of few minutes, we try to understand the politics, trade, and economy in Dunhuang. So can you tell us more about the relations between Dunhuang and Zhejiang province? Well, that comes to another session. And we would like to talk about the um, relation between Zhejiang province and the Dunhuang. So the provincial government, they also talk about the deep connection between Dunhuang and Zhejiang. So actually, we have a very close relations, a deep connection between the two regions. 
In Dunhuang, we have a lot of religions and civilizations. It has a huge impact on Zhejiang province. So in this area, we are able to see many other unearthed relics. So for example, this pottery figurine has been submitted from the Zhejiang Cultural Heritage Administration. So by looking at the shape and also the pattern of this figurine, I could say for this figure, it represents who people. So this people is not from like Zhejiang province. So I would say back in the old days, the Hu people already traveled to Zhejiang province from Dunhuang. So these people have been lived here 2,000 years ago. So what did they do in Zhejiang province 2,000 years ago? So now I would like to show you another pottery figurine. So for this figurine, it can be dated back to the Western Jin Dynasty. So from this uh, pottery figurine, you could see many figures. So for the Hu people, they are playing the instruments, they are also singing, and also they are trying doing the acrobatic. So from the pottery figurine, this is also submitted from the Shangyu Museum in Zhejiang province. So in this Artifacts, you could see who people is quite popular in Zhejiang province because they are bringing a lot of entertainment to Zhejiang province and also they are carrying the spirit of Buddhism. So 2,000 years ago, for Hangzhou city, we are quite advanced in the printing, in, including the mobile printing and the carvings. So for some of the printing techniques, we have also introduced it back to the Western region. So for all of those printing techniques, it has played a key role for us to record the history. So now we are moving to another area. Can you tell us more about this one? So I would like to introduce an expert, Chang Shu Hong. So he came to Dunhuang from France, and also he named different caves in the Mogao grottoes. So also the modern Zhejiang people have a huge impact on the civilization. For example, we have Mr. Luo Zhenyu, so he's one of the pioneer in the studies and the research of the Dunhuang culture. And also we name a few of the experts that has been expertized in the Dunhuang civilization. Now we are seeing some of the replicas of the murals that has been presented in the Mogao caves. So this is a landscape portrait and the landscape painting. It is very difficult for us to see the real painting and we're able to see some of the copying from Dunhuang caves. So for example, this one is coming from Sui and Tang Dynasty. We are able to feel the vibes and also feel the beautiful scenery in China. So in the end, I would like to invite uh, the curator to give us some suggestions and recommendations when they take a visit to the China National Silk Museum. And just now, we are talking about today's exhibition. We have 179 uh, relics, and 40 among of them are national treasures. Through all of these exhibits and uh, relics, we are able to see the convergence 
of the civilization between the East and West, and also we are able to see the fine traditions of the Chinese nation. Now we could see all of these um, relics, they are quite integrated and also quite advanced, inclusive. And once again, we could feel that uh, Dunhuang civilization not only belong to China, but also belong to the world. If you have a chance to visit the exhibition, maybe we could try our best to carry forward the spirit of the Silk Road. Thank you very much for your time. And please, please stay tuned with us, because today we have just pay a visit to this theme and the feature exhibition. And for this exhibition will last for 40 days until late August. So if you have time, make sure that you pay a personal visit here. Thank you for your time. See you next time.